joy. That's a word we all want, isn't it? It's not always found in the kind of places we, we think it will be. One of the people I really love in the Bible, maybe because he was one of the first people I, I met in the Bible, is John the Baptist. Uh, we meet him here in Luke 3, sentence 15, where people are amazed by what he's doing and what he's saying. And it says the people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John is such a celebrity and so amazing that people start thinking, is he God himself? Is he the Christ? Is he the, he's the great rescuer? And John automatically corrects that. And, and says no. John is one of the most self-effacing people we'll meet in the Bible. He's a remarkable man, an incredible leader, amazing orator, hugely accomplished, used by God in amazing and wonderful and incredible ways, and yet all the time, all the time, he's playing himself down. He's pointing away from himself. He's, he's saying, don't look at me. Don't, don't, don't pay any attention to me. Don't put your expectations on me. A friend of mine used to call it the John 330 code. Um, John was another one of the biographers of Jesus' life, a different John to John the Baptist. I know it's confusing, but in his account, he talks about John the Baptist. And in chapter 3, verse 30, he records that John the Baptist says, I must decrease, so he must increase. That John's motto for life, if you like, was constantly say, I must become little so Jesus can be fully magnified. I need to get out of the way so people can see just how wonderful Jesus is. How does that link with joy? Well, the analogy that John the Baptist himself uses is to talk about himself as the best man and Jesus as the groom at a wedding, the bridegroom. And when you're best man with someone, it means you're their, their, be their best friends. It means you're, you really love them, you really care for them. I've been a best man a couple of times. It's a huge privilege. One of the things you're desperate to do on that wedding day is to do everything to make much of the bride and groom. That, that your job as the best man is to cast the limelight and all the attention on the groom, on the bride, on their marriage. I mean, even nowadays, when the best man makes the funny speech and tells stories about the groom, still in that humour, in that comedy, you're still trying to say, look how wonderful my best friend is. Look how wonderful this groom is. All attention is on him. And at the end of the day, you sit down as the best man in the shadows, really exhausted, watching everyone celebrate the bride and groom, watching everyone cheer the bride and groom and, and sing their praises. And you sit exhausted in the shadows, having done your job. And what is it you feel? Joy, don't you? Real, deep joy that your best friend is being made much of and being seen in all his glory with his bride. That's John the Baptist's own analogy. He says, my joy is now complete as I become less and Jesus becomes more because he loves Jesus so much that when Jesus is praised, when Jesus is made much of, John's joy goes through the roof. Someone I've been really helped by, a guy called John Piper, who's both a pastor and a poet, says, we are most satisfied, most joyful in life when God is most glorified in us. The more we give Jesus the glory, the more joy we experience. The more we focus on him and less on ourselves, the more our joy expands. I want to be like John the Baptist. I want to become less so that Jesus can become more and my joy, my joy is complete as his glory is.